Well, more bad news for Obamacare as Moody's credit ratings agency downgrades its outlook now for health insurers, dropping its assessment from stable to negative. The agency is saying, quote, while we've had industry risks from regulatory changes on our radar for a while, the ongoing, unstable and evolving environment is a key factor for our outlook change. The past few months have seen new regulations and announcements that impose operational changes well after product and pricing decisions were finalized. Well, time for some real talk from our panel. Tony Sayag is a Fox News contributor. Dan Gerstein is the president of Gotham Ghostwriters. Now, I know, Dan, that you are not really a huge fan of Obamacare, but you are a Democrat. And as we're looking now at Moody's Credit Ratings Agency, I mean, come on, this is serious business now. They're downgrading to negative territory. How do you get out from this? No, there's no question that this is a political minefield for the Democratic Party. Um, now, a lot of this was predictable, given that you had a massive disruption of one of the biggest markets in the world. Secondly, you had uh, one party trying to kill it from the start, and then you had the other party, the president's party. That's not who, what they're downgrading, though. No, they're no, I understand. Let me finish. Let me finish. Then you had another party, the party in charge, that was incompetent in administering it. It's a recipe for disaster. Okay, but I, I think don't the think the thing... Republicans being against Obamacare had anything to do with Moody's. Oh, absolutely. Saying that, absolutely. In it has. what way? They've obstructed the implementation of this every step of the no, way. No, no. Fund, the, funding, website, the website obstructed its own I'm implementation. Say, yes, I, but but I'm not letting the Democrats off the hook. They've been incompetent in managing this, but they've had a lot of help from the de Republicans obstructing it. And my, my point... We have obstructed it. Anyway, look, it, let, let's, every read the report. The let's read the report, though. Let's not you know, put our own political impressions on it. Moody's gives you the reasons why they downgraded, and they're not political reasons. Number one, the economics of the matter. Only 24% of the people enrolling, Gretchen, are the young, healthy, 18 to 34 types who right. the it's system about needs. Viability. Exactly, it's to make it economically sure viable. You, it can economically the goal was 40 percent. They were only at 24. The second point to your quote, the administration of managing the implementation has been a disaster. It's management, management by crisis. There's but, no certainty for the insurers, but, but here's, so therefore here, they can't abide by the laws that the president set But here's them. the interesting thing. I think overall people have heard the story that healthcare.gov on the federal level didn't work so well. But what about these individual states? Now we're starting to hear this information trickle out that the states are also a complete debacle take for example my home state of minnesota now they are saying there that they're going to need 12 to 24 months two years to address the problems of the website there and they can't pay for it they're falling short of the enrollment goals 2.5 million dollar deficit in their enrollment right now dan there's no, like I said, I'm not going to defend the administration's handling of this. They have been incompetent in their managing of the rollout. They did not prioritize it the way they should have. The president should have been much more engaged. This was a signal accomplishment. This is what, how he's going to be judged on. He was not prioritize it. However, Tony, I got to move on, but does right. it survive? Look, they're going to have to do more fixes. It's not going to survive in its current form because of the reality, not the politics. Okay. Blistering reaction in the meantime to Governor Andrew Cuomo's comments about how New York is not welcoming of extreme conservatives like those who oppose abortion. Well, now Cardinal Timothy Dolan swinging back. The extremists are really on the other side. The extremists are those who want to radically expand abortion, are not happy with the way things are, resist the constitutionally legal restraints that have been reasonably placed upon abortion. Dan, does Governor Cuomo need to apologize to his constituents who might be conservative? Yes, I think what he said was out of line and more importantly, was out of character with what Tony and I were talking about this before, of how he has governed up until this point. He's governed very pragmatically, very non-ideologically, um, really spoken to the center of New York. And that's one of the reasons why his approval ratings, despite the bad economy here, have stayed pretty high. And I think what this lesson is going to come away from is there's a real danger in pandering to your base in ah, positioning, yeah. in positioning for the run-up of an election. Imagine that, but he has presidential aspirations. Uh, of course he does, and this was probably partly to create his liberal bona fides, particularly now with de Blasio in New York taking all of the limelight mm -hmm. as the progressive star. But, but to Dan's point, look, Cuomo has always been a bully. He reinvented himself when he got elected ah. governor, but this exposes the fact that that's what he is at his heart. Well, and, and Cardinal Dolan's the best guy to take on the schoolyard it'll bully. It'll be interesting to see if he actually apologizes. Guys, I gotta run. Thanks so much. Sure.